So here I am, sleeping peacefully in the night, getting a great night's sleep, and all of a sudden I get a kick from my wife telling me there's a clicking noise coming from our apartment somewhere. She doesn't know what it is or where it's coming from, but she wants me to investigate it. And I swear to you, the first thing I thought of was the alien noise. And if the alien noise had actually been there, this clicking noise, I, I don't know what I would have done. I, I really don't know what I would have done. But I came out to the living room and lo and behold, there was nothing out here, but it was just my regulator for my CO2 kicking on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off that was making that clicking noise. And I thought that my CO2 regulator had gone bad. So I came over here, shut everything off. And in shutting everything off, I realized I had water on my CASA timer. And my CASA timer was clicking on and off, on and off, on and off, which was causing the regulator to go on and off, on and off, on and off. So it wouldn't have off gas necessarily all the CO2, but it was definitely a problem that needed to be addressed. The reason why I got water on my CASA timer was not because of a leaky tank. I'll talk about that in just a second. It's because I didn't have a drip loop or proper cord management for all of my different electrical things that I have around my aquarium. So today we're gonna to talk about drip loops and their importance within our aquariums and why we need to make sure that we're keeping drip loops on almost all the different types of equipment that we're running into outlets or things of that nature. So all a drip loop is, is that you have your plug that goes into your outlet or your power strip or whatever it is, and you have your cord for your actual light or air pump or filter or heater. And in this cord here, if you have water that touches anywhere on this cord, it's going to run directly down into your outlet and potentially fry your electrical outlet, cause a fire, turn things on or off or fry things. But if we simply just put a drip or a loop into our, I'm gonna see if I can't do this one-handed, it's a little more difficult to, uh, to do, but we'll just be extremely exaggerated here. If we put a drip loop like this into our, our line, any water that touches up here or any water that touches here is going to drip down to the bottom part of this here and it's going to drip down to the ground and not get onto our electrical outlets. Now, having water dripping onto the ground is not good. I, I get that. But it's a lot better to have water dripping to the ground and be able to catch that small leak or small siphon that was started rather than having all that water dripping onto our outlets or onto our power strips because that can cause electrical problems, electrical issues, and you can fry an entire tank or fry your house and potentially have you know, fire started because of this. This isn't, this isn't a joke. This is a very serious matter. And the reason that I had water dripping down my lines, um, because I, I did not keep good cord management. I'll, I'll be honest with that. I try to, and but when you're moving things around and adjusting things, sometimes you don't realize that your cords are all just tangled up at the back of your cabinet and that there's no lines going down past where your outlets go in and going back up. And that's what happened to me when my hang on back filter, which hang on back filters are eventually going to fail at some point or the other, especially if you have a pump that's on the outside of your hang on back filter, you're going to have water that will eventually start dripping from it somewhere or seals that go bad. And that's what happened. I had an O-ring that went bad and there was a slight drip of water that ended up going along this line because there was no drip loop in it, directly down into the power outlet and fried my Casa. I actually got a lot of notifications from my Casa timer that it was overheating and there was a problem, but my had my phone on do not disturb. So now I learned from that. And now Casa will send me notifications if there's anything ever wrong directly to me, even at night to wake me up to let me notify this. Because it was going on for about two hours um, where it started noticing that it was overheating before we finally caught it. And thankfully nothing else happened, um, that it was just simply switching out the power outlet that was dead or water damaged and not using it anymore, getting a new CASA timer and putting everything back in and being diligent and making sure that I had these drip loops in place to make sure that water didn't get into my electrical outlets. And this leads perfectly into why I don't like hang on back filters in comparison to underground filters. A hang on back filter is going to fail. Like my hang on back filter has an external pump for it to circulate water throughout the tank. And that external pump is going to eventually have seals or plastic that's going to deteriorate and break down and are going to cause a problem later down on the road. And that later down the road was today for me. Whereas with an under gravel filter or a box filter or a sponge filter, you are not going to have any type of water. If you properly set up your system with your airline management and whatnot, you're not gonna have any way for water to get out of your aquarium if say your air pump would go off. It would just stop pumping, you would come out, you'd realize, oh, I don't have any air in my tanks, I need to fix this. I'll put my backup air pump on and we're good to go. Whereas with all these other types of filtrations that have motors that are external to the tank, there is that likelihood of having water dripping and leaking onto our things where that's just not a thing that happens with air-driven filtration systems that are inside of a tank. 
So if you want to see more about why I love under oil filters and why I'm not a huge fan of hang on back filters, I'll leave that video here for you guys. I'll see you guys over in that one. Have a blessed day. See ya.